With the Depression ra raging, the question is, what is Hoover going to do, or maybe not do? There are two claims put forth that are not true at all. The Republicans will assert that Hoover and his administration were fighting the Depression effectively until the Democrats came along and made it worse. Democrats will say that Hoover was doing absolutely nothing while this country was failing. Like I said, neither is true. Here's a generalization that I think is correct. Hoover's administration did a great deal to fight the Depression, more than any other administration before it ever even dreamed of doing. But what Hoover did was limited by his philosophy, so it probably was not enough. Think about it. Grover Cleveland would have never dreamt of doing the things that Herbert Hoover had done. Hoover's philosophy was this. The economic miracle that was the United States was built by business. What had the government done to help? It had helped the businesses succeed, right? Hoover said that the only purpose of government was to provide a favorable climate for, for business. Hoover tried to save America by saving American business. Well, that makes absolute sense unless you're some sort of radical. What Hoover would not do, however, was have the government help the American people directly. Only through businesses, not government relief for the unemployed, for example. No direct relief. Why not? Well, we'll have a look at this. What did Ho Grover Cleveland say about the issue? Cleveland, as well as Hoover, felt that if the government began to assist people directly, it would make them weak. And in fact, it would make them expect more in the future. Hoover says this, Direct relief from the government would injure the spiritual responses of the American people. Now, Hoover really believed in this. And again, if you look at it, it makes absolute sense. If you believe it works. This is welfare capitalism. Businesses succeed, then we all succeed in the capitalistic system. The problem arises with what to do about it in the meantime. Don't say he didn't do anything. He did. A lot. For example, as far as unemployment goes, Hoover was not a cruel man. He was, also, he was very famous for helping and assisting those in disasters. In 1930, he organized the Committee on Unemployment Relief. What it did was create an agency to advise private charity groups on how to help the unemployed. It didn't have any money, and it couldn't spend any money, but it did advise private groups on how to do it. Still, no direct relief. Another thing he's going to do is pass the Smoot-Hawley tariff. You know, what, this is the standard Republican policy. What are we, sorry, what is the standard Republican policy for helping business? Protective tariffs, right? In 1930, they passed the Smoot-Hawley tariff, which raised tariffs even higher. Now, wait a minute. Was foreign competition... What was ruining our economy and country? Of course not. But it goes in line with the thinking of Hoover and his administration. If you think that business is what's going to save this country, give them more protection. Of course, things didn't get better. In fact, they got worse. In 1931, the economy of Europe collapses, which meant there was not even there was now even less demand for our goods overseas. Plus, any investments that the Europeans had on, in this country, they were taken back over to Europe and making the situation worse. So as things got worse, this led to Hoover having his most important anti-depression measure. In 1932, the Hoover administration sponsored a measure called the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. The RFC was a government corporation that was given a lot of money in those days, $500 million. And they were having the power to borrow even more money. It would make loans to businesses to help them survive. Banks, insurance companies, railroads, you name it. The, the RFC lasted throughout the 1930s, even after Hoover left office. Now, it w did not help to end the Depression, but it definitely helped in helping it not get worse. Beyond this, Hoover went no further. I don't think Hoover understood what was going on. It's easy for the President of the United States to become insulated from the plight of the Amer average American. Let me give you an example. Here is a quote from Hoover concerning a man selling apples on street corners. I quote, Some Washington Apple Growers Association truly appraised the sympathies of the unemployed. They set up a system of selling apples on the street corners, thus selling their crops and raising their prices. Many persons left their jobs for the more profitable ones of selling apples. He believed this. He was way out of touch if he thought that people were leaving steady jobs during this period to sell apples. Beyond that, there were protests, and his administration spectacularly mishandled them. And the best example was in 1932, in what we call the Bonus Expeditionary Force. 
As a way of background, after World War I, there was a lot of vets who were promised in 1924 to get a bonus payment, money for their service, that was going to be paid for in 1945. Ironic, since that's the year World War II ends. Of course, Congress didn't know that. I guess, I guess they weren't planning for it, right? So these vets, during the Depression, called on Congress to give them their bonuses early. Well, in 1931, Congress actually gives some of the bonus in a life insurance policy that they could borrow against. They didn't give them cash money. It doesn't help. So in 1932, they're going to ask for the rest. They called upon the government to crack up the printing presses and print out legal tender. They wanted like $2.5 billion given to them. And of course, Hoover and, the Co and Congress wouldn't do it. So they marched on Washington and called themselves the Bonus Army. Congress and Hoover still would not respond and told them to go home. A lot of them said that we don't have homes, so they just stayed around. They built camps on the outskirts of Washington. There were thousands of unemployed veterans there, and no, and no, and and it didn't take too long for trouble to prop up. Pretty soon they are going to clash with Capitol Police. And after that, Hoover called upon the military to deal with the problem. The chief of staff of the Army himself, Douglas MacArthur, and two of his junior officers, Dwight Eisenhower and George Patton, are going to be called upon to get these, Hoover, these bonus marchers out. They came out with tanks, machine guns, and flamethrowers, and burned down the bonus Army camp. How Hoover, after they had been driven out of the camp, actually called them communist infiltrators. This was a total mishandling of, of a situation if there ever was one. And this is what really put the last nail in Hoover's coffin. By 1932, the American people were not revolutionary, and they didn't want anything radical for the most part, but they did want a change in leadership. Hoover's administration failed in handling the Depression. And I don't know who or what could have been done to lessen the Depression, but Hoover was in a position to do so, and he was blamed for it. It was a public relations nightmare, and in the election of 1932, new leadership is going to emerge.